Hello and welcome, I'm Bilal Dill and this is Transport Fever to Deluxe and Console Edition. I'm going to play a new Let's Play that's going to be pretty much vanilla. I don't know if we need anything that's modded, but this is geared towards all the new console players that came along. And I'm assuming that you don't have access to any or all of the mods, so that's what we're going to do. Um, this is geared towards beginners and medium experienced players, the really hardcore players. Probably won't learn anything, but maybe you still entertain, so I hang out. First, let's start. You can go to the map editor and edit some maps if you want, but you also can do almost the same thing in the free game mode. First, there are a bunch of settings here. If you are on console, you're not going to have access to huge, megalomaniac, or tiny, so we're just going to play very large. Uh, map format, I like the really long, the kind of really long ones, but I also like a little bit of whip. That is just so that I can have really nice long trains. That's important, and this will give me that. Then towns and industries. This is relatively important for late game performance because if you have too many towns, you have too many citizens. With too many citizens, your um, the number of agents in your game, which is really what slows down your CPU because every agent needs some calculations, is going up. So more towns means less performance. On a very large map, I'm hoping that we can play with high number of towns. In this case, 21. It's not too many, it's not too few. Should give us a pretty good setup to get things moving. And then industries, how many do we need? I like to play with low because if you set it too high, it is really easy. And setting the industries to a little lower means you can actually play. The game is a little harder that way. And that's how I like to play. And then over here, you can actually select your climates if you want. Um, there's also There are also ways, let's go here. There are also ways to set your climate to something else. I don't know if you have all of this available. So if you don't, please put that in the comments. But if you want to set your climate, for example, to temperate, but your environment to something else, you can do that. Something that I do every once in a while is set it to tropical. This means your map is more, mainly islands. And then I set the uh, environment to whatever I want because you can still get the nice, um, the, the yellow, if you, if you go with the desert with the dry theme, or the nicer European green with the temperate theme and nice, prettier trees. I, I like it better. But for today, we're going to just play temperate on a temperate map. I will enable all vehicles because I don't like to lock, be locked down by that. I don't play true to the region, so if that is something you care about, um, I'm not your guy. But you can set all these ups, uh, all these things up. Um, and then in here, my start year, I like to play 1900. Um, why? You can start in 1850, but if I start in 1850, it's mostly going to be set up one line and then wait until the 80s, 70s and 80s until we're actually going somewhere because the earlier trains are relatively slow and don't make a lot of money and the earlier vehicles are even slower and make less money. So all you can do is make really short lines or long lines that will not make you money very often. So um, I like to start 1900 right now just so that we move along with the series a little faster, no other reason. And then at some point you can also just pause the year and you only progress in time without moving the, the year year further. And that's that's important too. Difficulty, am I gonna play hard? I played very hard in the last season that I did. It is totally possible. Um, the only thing these difficulty settings are doing for you are twofold. One, um, on easy, you get 100% of your profits. On uh, medium, you get 80%, then 60%, and 40%. I may have the numbers a little bit wrong, but that is the general gist of things. So you make more money on easy, you make less money on hard. That means everything that you do has to be more thought out. You need to have less empty trips, and things are still just going to be slower because it also incre increases your maintenance cost for everything that you build. So um, if you play very hard, you just have to be a lot more thoughtful with everything that you do and you have to wait a lot longer to make things work on hard it's not as bad the other thing you will have a loan and the loan interest rate is also set by the difficulty setting obviously for the easiest it's the lowest loan and so on so i'm just going to play on hard just to keep this thing moving because it's all possible uh town cargo needs absolutely do six you're going to start with two for each town but they will change and that's what i want it's super fun industry closure frequency Often is fine, um, but it has to be lack of use. Lack of use is defined as in you're not taking the product anywhere. It's not delivering stuff to them. Just keep that in mind when you play this. Industry density target. This has to do with what we set in the in the beginning, where we wanted a low um, density target for the factories. 
Let's go back here. Do I like this map? I have some mountains over here. There's a clear mountain chain that blocks everything from happening. Uh, and I'm not a fan of that. So let's find a couple other, a uh, couple other maps that we can make work. This one is actually really nice. And I'm going to try to make this map available in, um, in the in the workshop well in the workshop for everyone that is on a computer uh, but for you guys maybe you can put the seed in there it's capital d t z d lower d p capital w k p c uh, and capital m and i will put that somewhere so you can actually read it because it's ridiculous <laughs> but uh yeah I, I like when there's a river because that means you can actually make real use of ships potentially and let's get started First things first, the game will start on single speed. Get to paused right away. Otherwise, your timer will start running. And if your timer starts running, you will run through vehicles quicker if you want. Um, the first thing I would recommend is if you like where you are, change your date speed. I have no idea how to do this on a controller, but that is fine. And there's obviously a bug right now in the system, and that will be resolved eventually. But moving the date speed all the way to the left should pause the date. So if you now play it forward, January 1st should not move. Cool, wonderful, we did that, great. Now, the next thing is, where do we start? Well, um, for that, we should probably understand the other things that are on the menu. Let's go over them really quick. You have an account here, you can borrow and repay. You can borrow up to 30 million in 1900, that number changes depending on the year that you're in, and you're starting with a loan of $10 million. You have to pay interest on that. Cool. There are a couple charts up here, and then you can actually build a headquarter building right here. It looks like some building, and that will grow depending on how big your company score is. So that's pretty fun. Um, your earnings, just interesting to know every year what's happening. Uh, lifetime passenger and cargo transport. Line manager and vehicle manager. We will talk about those extensively later on. Um, vehicle, sorry, road construction. You can have roads, buildings waypoints, tools, and uh, pretty much the same thing happens for rail, ships, airplanes when you unlock them, I think that's in 1920, and then here's terraforming. You have the smoothing tool and the flattening tool. Smoothing really just means make it less choppy. Flattening means make it a plateau, okay? That, that's all there is, and then raising and lowering and paint tools and all the other things that you can find here. Nothing too interesting. The brush size, strength, and rotation is all over here. So if you want that, there you go. Bulldozing, not everything is free. If you want to bulldoze houses, for example, that costs money. That is not always a good thing to do right in the beginning. So stay away from that if you can. But if you do bulldoze houses, just be aware that there are some overlays over here that are important. Um, what we want is the housing overlay. Let's do this. We have um, industrial buildings over here. We have commercial buildings, and then the other buildings are residential buildings. What you want is to not delete everything in the beginning. As long as your city has at least one building type left of the building, um, it will regrow. Once you kill all of the building types, like all the industrial buildings, your city will never get industrial buildings back. Now, I don't know how the six cargo demand changes that, uh, but I'm assuming it's the same thing. No more added industry demands if you delete everything. So just make sure that you leave at least one building of each type uh, when you start deleting things. Just, just a little heads up. Um, there are more overlays over here. You may care about the HUD icon filter. I usually turn off the money in and money out, and then you can turn off other things as needed. Wonderful. Uh, and then there's a couple more things over here. We have land statistics, vehicle statistics, station statistics. This one's important because you wanna know what you're overloading and what you don't. Um, town statistics, we're gonna start there in just a second, and then industry statistics scene uh, just an overview of everything that's going on. Something that may be good to point out, especially for all the new players, uh, production. Production is funny because this one says 400 out of 400. What are you? You are a base resource. And there are different names that we can talk this. All this means is it doesn't have an input. It doesn't need anything special to produce the 400 units of cargo, in this case, lumber or logs. Logs, cool. Um, it will just produce that. It doesn't need anything. And you can ship it anywhere you want, all 400 of them. Let's find a place that cares about having this. So for that, we can just click on consumers and then see, oh, there is a sawmill here. There's another sawmill, another sawmill. These are not sorted by distance. So I'm just going to click on one. 
And this one will tell me, <clears throat> I would like to produce 200 on this level already. Great. It wants two logs to produce one plank. That's what this means. Uh, great. That means we could use, and I'm just going to click on this, sorry. I'm going to click on this one here. I'm going to click on this one here so we can now compare them. The forest can produce 400 units of logs. This one will produce 200 units of uh, planks. That's great. So I could, uh, I could move all of the 400 units of uh, logs to this sawmill and get paid for them. And the sawmill will just produce them. It will take all the stock. You will get paid for all of it. Um, but you're not actually going to ship it anywhere because then you don't have anywhere to put the planks. And if you don't ship the planks anywhere, this sawmill may disappear after a while because that's what our setting was at the beginning with industry re something. Um, so that's important. You do want to uh, actually ship the stuff to somewhere else. Once you start shipping things, as you can see, there's a, there's a slight difference in the things. On the left, there's just a thick blue bar, this blur 0, 4, uh, 400, and transport. Um, they will fill in once we actually turn any lines on. On the right, there is this arrow down, then a thing in the middle, and an arrow up for all three of them. Once all three of these are in the arrow up level, we are leveling up our industry. And we go to the next level, which usually doubles the production, doubles the shipment, doubles everything. And then you have another half level and another full level. So uh, in the end, this um, sawmill can do, hmm, I don't remember if it's 800 or 1200. I don't know if it's double, double or not, but every level up gives you more production. And that's what you want, because if you have more production, you can produce or you can transport more stuff. However, this forest will never produce more than 400 units. So if you get the next level here, you need to find another forest to deliver that to here. Hope that makes sense. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll get into more of those things once we actually set up the, the lines. The next thing that I would do, how should we start? Well, what I like to do, little trick, a <laughs> little cheat maybe, um, find the biggest city that you have. The, the first button usually takes you to the city. The second button just gives you um, city information. This is our biggest city. What is good about a big city? There's generally more demand. So in this case, it has a demand of 93 and 79. You can also see that down here. Cargo tells you the demand. Currently, zero of 93 tools is supplied and zero of 79 uh, machines is supplied. Interesting. Um, so you want to start delivering something. However, tools is a terrible, terrible production chain to get started. Machines, same thing, and goods. So I would exclude the first three um, towns that we have sitting here. So dot fold is one that is interesting because food is relatively easy and fuel is potentially your easiest starter cargo that you can have because you can do it via train and the train wagons can carry the whole production chain that is required for fuel. I will explain that in a little more detail right now. Stotford, okay, you want fuel. To make fuel happen, let's turn this one off. To make fuel happen, what do we need? We need oil. Just, that's just an oil well. There's one over here. There's a Stutford oil well. It actually comes for this one. Interesting. It's really far away, though. Um, the, the oil well produces 400 because it's a basic resource. Um, has to be transported to the oil refinery. And oil refinery takes two to one. Um, for this. So this whole oil well could go into this oil refinery and then we get 200 units of oil. Stotford needs fuel, doesn't need oil. There's a fuel refinery up here, takes one um, oil, turns it into one fuel, and this one can only produce up to 100 units. So as you can see in this full uh, supply chain, you could transport 400 units over here to the oil refinery and get 200 up to 200 units production, but you will only ship 100 units because this production currently is only accepting 100 because your level is not high enough. Uh, and then we would send that to Stotfold. That could work, but Stotfold only needs 67 units of fuel. That is not a lot, but it's something that we can start with. Um, the only problem is this map is not flat. So let's look at the contour lines. If you want to build on here, you have to be aware that this one is relatively low. And I'm hoping on um, on the console, you can also move your cursor. If you look up here, there is the height at the cursor. It tells you 93 meters. Cool. Hey, water is below zero. And then next to water is about zero. Just be aware of that. So if I want to move from here, oil to up here, I would have to move 200 meters up from the water here, 
almost 100 meters uh, meter down. So 300 meter change, that is one expensive and two trains run very, very slow when they see that happening. So this, although it's a complete fuel chain, is not a good starting point because we don't have the money or the trains that can actually handle transport like this, especially since we need double a double train transporting everything from here uh, to the oil refinery, then we need just a single train oil refinery to fuel refinery, and then we have to get everything back to start vault. It's not a good setup. So let's find the next one. And this one, even though the city is smaller, has a higher demand for fuel. So this one could be an interesting choice. One, it's next to the river. Um, that can be a good thing. Two, I already see a, an oil well and a oil refinery. That is excellent because both of those we could use right away if uh, if we make something work. There's another oil well here, another oil well there. Very good so far. Another oil refinery here. So if you want to go to the other side, that is also an option. The only thing that we need is figure out if there's an oil refinery anywhere close by. And the answer is sadly no. There's no, sorry, a fuel refinery. And that's what you want to look for if you want to set up the whole line. You don't just want to blindly place something and hope that's going to work. So at this point, I can't see what I want to find right away. And uh, that's not good. But something that you can do is uh, click on the city and then ask for the suppliers. We have two fuel refineries on the map only. One is up here and the game suggested uh, how we get there. This was the fuel refinery that we already saw earlier. So that's not helpful. And then there's another fuel refinery on the other side of the map. Perfect. <laughs> so even though this is um, the easiest supply chain to set up, it's the worst supply chain for this map specifically because they're just, they're just hard to make. Um, however, ooh, there, is, there is a potential for something interesting here. We have that oil well right here. We have this oil refinery and this fuel refinery. That is great. We have Butley that requires 46 units of fuel. That's not going to work because this is a really long, long run. And we could potentially have a train loaded up full there. Then getting stuff here, uh, be half full, go into fuel, and then fuel, get half full back to uh, Butley. Um, but that is full. So 100%, 50%, 50%. Um, is not a good run when you have 300% to fill and you have 150% full. On hard mode, that's not going to get you exactly where you want to be. So it's not the best chain that we can set up here. And th those are numbers that you don't have to worry about that much, but it's just not as efficient. You want to, on hard mode, you want to try to run 75% of the time full. You, can, you, you will probably never avoid running empty. That is something I would like to do once we're established to have my trains at least carry two types of cargoes both directions. That would be great, but that doesn't mean that we can just make that happen. So uh, back to the drawing board. An option that you always have is simply setting up bus lines between your cities. Bus lines can get you started. They usually pay for themselves as long as you put the bus, um, the bus stop in the center of the city that covers most of it. Um, but as you can see, these paths can get really, really long. And you don't have enough money to uh, afford all the buses that you need to actually make this work out well. So I'm not sure that works for all places. This one, the Butley, Greater Willington, and Middleton, and uh, Witness uh, would probably be fine for the distance that we want. But this is also a really nice regional train setup um, if you can get it set up at some point. We don't have that option right now. So let's get back to our problem at hand and figuring out where we're going. Start fault. You also need food. Can we have a food setup that makes sense here? We have crops or grain, grain, and um, nothing, nothing really exciting. There's a food production, a pr food processing plant up there. Something that you could do at this point is just pay back your loan and wait until industries start to move around because there is a chance that you will get a better industry setup um, at some point. I just don't. That's not guaranteed. That's not something that we can we can just assume. So let's not just assume that. Cockermouth, do you have a food setup that we can use around you? Because oh, Dunstable, Dunstable, however you want to call it. I'm gonna say words wrong. Just it's the way it is. Um, uh, to me, most of these cities are imaginative. Uh, imaginative. They don't exist because I'm not associated with them. And here's the thing. 
Most cities don't exist, most city names don't just exist in one place. They're usually in multiple places and local or regional accents will say them in different ways. And I will say it wrong for at least one of those accents. So I'm just going to make my own, my own word, figure out how we're going to go about that. And that is just how I play. It's fine. There's food. There's a food production right here. There's the crop production over there. This one is interesting because I think this could be a shipping line. It's not super far. It's very doable. And we can actually get a small little cheat uh, built in here by expanding the, uh, the food needs. So that's what we're going to start with. Actually, I wanted to do a train, but I think um, a... a uh, Oh boy, <laughs> I do think um, a ship-based economy is actually a really good start because it does have a much better payback and ships are a lot better at transporting things because if you use a train, grain is transported in a hopper and food is transported in a boxcar. Both of those don't necessarily get along. Um, if you get mods, obviously that's different, but we don't have mods right now. So let's see what we can do with a cargo harbor. Um, ideally, and sorry, I'm using um, the scroll wheel to, to zoom in and out, and obviously this game does not use that. What I'm going to do is going to set up a couple different things. The first one is, um, let's set this to a large, large terminal. One terminal should be fine because I don't expect there to be that many ships that go in here. And as you can see, the, the price is variable. The price depends on, zooming in, how deep you carve into the mountain. Like the deeper you carve, the more expensive it gets. So you can choose to go really far out here or a little closer and give your um, boats a little extra space. This is what I'm gonna do. Um, I would like the trucks afterwards because we do have to move trucks around here to get a good chance of moving something along. And this part is very important. You need to make sure that whatever you're building has access to the thing that you care about. In this case, what do I care about? I care about my trucks being able, or I care about that my ships are connected to the food factory. Right now they aren't, otherwise it will be highlighted. So what I need to do is build a something that can handle this. The way I'm gonna do that is a simple platform. I'm only planning on having one, um, one, one type of vehicle driving here. And as you can see, this is really expensive there, and it's not as expensive here. So I think what I'm going to do, you just have to make sure that it's white highlight, or that, that there's a white highlight over here next to the um, next to the dock, and something that I like to do, actually, this is not bad. Um, something that I like to do is, well, first I should explain. What you pay for is from beginning to beginning. <laughs> it's, it, sorry, be, beginning to end which is another way to say as the crow flies, but that gets interrupted by certain things. For example, if you move passengers from uh, Brixham to Cockermouth um, you, and you use one train or one, one vehicle, then you just pay from Brixham to Cockermouth as the crow flies. If you would, however, put a collecting station here and bring your Brixham people to the collecting station up there, and then moving from the collecting station to Cockermouth, you would get paid for the distance from Brixham directly to the transfer station, and then from the transfer station directly to Cockermouth, which is clearly a longer distance uh, than the direct, the, the direct path. The same is true for cargo. So you can artificially extend the distance that your cargo travels and get more money for that. I only like to use that cheat when I absolutely have to, and there's no other way to get around this. But we are not in that situation yet because we should still make pretty good money on this. The other thing that you can do, and it's up to you to choose if that is something you care about, is you can put these cargo terminals as far away from the places that, that they care about. As you can see here, you could technically put a, uh, a truck that just drives from this side to the other side. And that's how you deliver things because now both terminals are connected. Um, I don't like that, but you you feel free to do that if you really want to. So I'm, I'm just gonna put this one relatively close to where I actually want them to go so they actually have something to drive and it just looks a little nicer. And you may have noticed I chose the length to be 30 meters and only one platform, why? Because I'm already planning on only having one line 
going from Brixham West to Upper Brixham um, with a truck where you're waiting for full here and you're waiting, you don't wait for full here because this one's gonna take a little while to produce. Plus I need to deliver two crops for one food. So this one will always only be half as much stuff as there was here. You could set up two lines, one to just deliver um, grain and one to move the food, but that's, that's a waste of a truck at that point. Um, and the reason I make this relatively long, and you can make these longer by clicking on configure and going to cargo, making these longer is very simple. Ships have a lot of cargo loaded. And when they drop off stuff, there's a lot of stuff here. Something that will probably be a little smarter is if I put the, um, the actual cargo station. I'm actually gonna do that because I still get refund money for this. I'm gonna put the cargo station on this side because the, um, bulldozer, there you go. Uh, there you go. Uh, because the vehicles will come in over here and then I have double space for queuing uh, before they go back out. Otherwise, it will just queue outside on the road and that's not as nice. That, that's really the only reason. On this side, I just don't need as much because when I drop off, it will go directly into the processing plant. And um, when they when they pick up, they should only be a little bit here. So I'm, I'm not terribly worried about that one. That's more a this is more flying flying transfer and over here it's more you have to wait until the ship actually gets there which means we're gonna have to wait for a little while until we actually get stuff uh, delivered the next thing that i want there is a nice little bridge there which i don't really want to mess with so we're gonna leave that because <laughs> why not um, i'm gonna put another little harbor here this harbor again at this point is not connected to anything but that is quite all right because i'm pretty sure we're close enough to uh, the building that we care about. So let's make sure that we connect this. You need these little tentacles there. That's very important. And then we click on the harbor. And as long as the uh, port is highlighted, this is now in range. This is this is totally fine. Everything is set up and everyone is happy. Um, and now we can actually move grain from there to our upper harbor. And we're going to set that up with a line later on. But I also want to move the food to Dunstable. Dunstable. 33 units is not a lot, but we have Cockermouth over here. This is also a nice unit that needs 61 units. So in bulk, that is 100 units of uh, food that we want to move, which is pretty nice because that is that is what we can produce at this point. <laughs> it's, it's really what that is. Um, so let's set up another building. We're just going to start with one uh, platform. Uh, and that is because I am... Let's put that one closer to here. We're just going to start with one platform and then we're going to expand that to two because I will set up one platform per city. And that's important here uh, because we're just going to deliver to Dunstable, Dunstable to get this started. Later on, we can um, make another station and we can potentially even turn this into trains. But right now, there's not a good setup for trains. Honestly, this is a relatively complicated map the way it's built right now. I am totally happy with that. I will put the um the dock just a little further away from my from my harbor just because i may want to expand the harbor but i'm not going to expand it past the past the bridge and if you're unsure if you can actually use uh the water for pass uh, for passing it you just can look at this if there is a continuous green line a ship can go through there there's no continuous green line here but there's one here so ship can go through the middle and over here and that should work just Fine. Cool. Let's set something up. First thing, new line. We'll just click on the line manager, new line, um, select, click on the blue icons. That's usually what's the easiest. Click on the blue icon, tell uh, to tell you what we want, and then click on the second one. As you can see, it makes really funny things with the <laughs> with the shipping line that every once in a while with the pathfinding, but that should be fine. It shouldn't slow you down too much. Um, especially on the first line, this is important. I set it to load full only and then set the max stop time to infinity <clears throat> because i don't care how long it takes to fill this up i just don't want you to run empty because you only get paid for the cargo that you actually deliver so bring all the cargo up to the other station and then come back um, but if there is something to load it will load that cool then the other thing that i would say is get a naming convention that you like i it doesn't it really doesn't matter what you what, what you really make, but um, it's important that you that you stick to it. I'm gonna call this one now grain food uh, ship, and we are in Dunstable. 
Yeah, done. Dunstable. I'm going to change that because ships are usually not as common as everything else. So that one should be good to go. Um, however, if you send a ship out right now, it wouldn't work, but we can still put a ship on this. Um, we're just going to do one. We just want cargo, so make sure that you don't accidentally use a passenger ship. And then these ships, uh, there are some that are only tankers, that one and this one. This guy can carry literally everything, and it has two compartments, which means it can transport two different types of cargo uh, at 110 capacity. Then we have this one that goes a little, little slower, also at 100 capacity. So I would say speed is king for right now. This costs a million bucks. This one costs much less than a million bucks, but it's again, it's much slower. And in the end, you really just pay for capacity and speed. That's the main components that go into your uh, price of the vehicle. The power goes into it a little bit, but that really just matters for how fast does it speed up. And for ships, it doesn't matter that much. Oh, there is there's one difference. Loading speed here is 40. Loading speed on the Dunara Castle is 50. That's actually a reason why I would go with that. It's also almost half the price, so we can almost get double of these. So yeah, that's our first ship. You can name it if you really want to. Assign it to the line that you care about. Now, uh, you should see ship is coming out. Very nice. There you go. Ooh. Let's speed it up a little bit. Uh, ship is coming out. That's very important. It will find its way very easy, but... There's currently nothing showing up at the port. Why is that? Well, it doesn't have anywhere to go. It doesn't just ship stuff to ship stuff. Uh, you, sir, it's going the other direction, which I don't want. So just tell it, hey, turn around, buddy. Go to this port first. It's important. If you assign a lot of ships at the same time, it will um, split them, split them out a little bit. But for right now, I don't want you to run empty because when it's parked, it does use less fuel than if it's... Um, if it's moving. So yeah, I just want you to park here and there's nothing happening yet because um, there's no, no nothing happening over here. What we need is a way to actually um, move the cargo from the port to the factory. So let's do that now. Uh, vehicle, we need a regular road, uh, road depot like this. Road depots are 20,000 by default and down here would pay twice for that and I don't want to do that. So I'm just gonna put you here. 19,000 is a nice nice number. And now we can actually assign our first um, road track or truck, truck route. That's what it's called, truck line. Um, same thing as before, just click on the blue buttons. I will assign this to wait and load effectively forever because if there's no ship here, there's nothing gonna happen. And we move that around and then we name this truck um, Brixen. Brix food production. As you can see, I'm already messing with my naming, but um, just figure out what you like. And there you go. And now we can send this guy into something. So cargo, what do we have available? A bunch of stuff. I think I like any of these flatbed trucks really, they're the same speed and all that. Make sure that you understand your top speed here is what limits you, not the road necessarily. Right now we don't have roads that go faster than, well, we don't have to build roads that can go faster than this because we don't have vehicle that need it. Um, we're just going to start with five vehicles for now. You will pay for the vehicles that are on uh, on the line here, but um, that should be that should be okay. And look, now we're getting some grain going over here. It's going to take a little while until something happens, but that is quite all right. This one, Dunstable, um, is trying to ship stuff and it's saying, I'm trying to ship this much. And this number is changing, changing overall. The transport is not going to change until stuff is actually delivered to a consumer. And it's trying to ship um, currently directly to to Dunstable for uh, yeah to the Dunstable, sorry the Brixham Food Processing Plant. Great. How much do you want? You want a hundred. So I'm expecting, I'm expecting that this guy is going to stop shipping at two hundred because we want to produce a hundred and we need two for one. Got it? Clear. Great. Now, some line optimization that you should absolutely do. Look at your ship, click on the line, pull it to the side. Our current rate is 33. How much do we want to move? 200 units. 200 units of grain need to make it to the production, <clears throat> to the bricks and port. And that, the first level you get for free, you don't have to ship everything back right away. But we do want to produce 200, or we do want to ship 200. So how many more do we need? We need six. Six of these ships should get us to 200, but right now we're not there. 
and you don't have to spend money on chips that you don't currently need. But what you can do later on is go to Manage Vehicles, click on the vehicle that you want, and then you can just click this little copy button. We're just going to do that right now so you see what happens. The new ship gets created that goes to it goes on the same line as the ship that you got to create it from. We're going to speed this up, otherwise it's going to take forever. There's our ship. Where are you trying to go? You're going to break some port. I don't want you to go there. So sometimes micromanaging this is actually very helpful because now the ship's just going to park here until this guy's actually full. Great. You can do the same optimization down here with your trucks. The trucks are parked right now. Obviously, I would have only needed one truck if I really wanted to, but these shouldn't cost that much money. Click on your line. See what your rate is. Your rate here is 80. Okay. And here it gets a little more complicated. If I click on this line, it's just another way to get to the same line. If I click on this, then my rate is 65 now with two ships, but my frequency is 19 minutes. Very high. Here our frequency is, let's call it a minute. So 19 times higher, which means the rate doesn't mean the same thing. Um, which technically could mean the five trucks that I have on here are good enough um, for the 200 that I want later on. But this is something that you can optimize as you go. And all you really care about that is, is that eventually um, this boot processing plan just produces 100% of the stuff that you care about. So this guy is going to ship stuff over and the first ship is full and the uh, second ship is currently getting filled. On different, well, not these guys, but over time, these numbers, or sorry, over time, the loading and unloading should go a lot faster because these guys... Um, well, there will be stuff already loaded here while the ships are not really there. And yeah, when, when this ship is done, we're just going to create a new one because that's that makes life really easy. Um, let's see, how full are you? You are almost full. Let's just buy another one and make sure that that goes the right direction. And then that should be wonderful. Then the last thing we're going to worry about, where are you going? Dunstable port? Perfect. Uh, the last thing that we're going to worry about is actually delivering stuff, your first delivery of things. Dunstable, yes, let's look at it. If we look at the buildings, is it this one? No, is it this one? Yes, if we look at the buildings, we're just currently trying to deliver to where there is food desired, which is all of these commercial buildings. Um, there are also brick buildings over here and there are other buildings over here. We just want to deliver here. There is something called a mission layer or pollution or whatever you want to call this. Um, current, there you go. What is the pollution for your residences? The only buildings that actually care about noise pollution is are the residential buildings, and they're highlighted in dark. And as you can see, every single vehicle has some noise pollution. So if you click on this, um, you may already see that your noise pollution is not nothing. Right now it's fine. So every vehicle that you add to your transport network may potentially add noise pollution for this. Dunstable? Right now, it's a terrible city because residential areas are not concentrated in one spot, so it's not easy to avoid them, especially if you don't want to deliver something. Later on, you can force uh, relocation of those of those residents by just deleting the buildings and then hoping that they will rebuild somewhere else later on. That's totally something you can do. It's just a little tedious, but uh, it may actually be worth it. Looks like you are about ready to be to get another one. Let's click on this one where you go in Dunstable Port. That's where I want you to go. Great. So shipping and transport, That this should all be 100% at some point. Okay, let's pick where we're going to deliver something. You can choose where we are on streets again. There's a bus tram stop. You cannot drop off stuff here in Transport Fever 1. That was possible, but it's not a thing anymore. Um, you need the truck unload stop. And you put that somewhere we actually have a catchment radius of everything that you care about. And that can be in a lot of different places. As you see, different things highlight depending on where I put this truck stop. Um, sometimes things don't highlight exactly the way you want them to. But it looks like if I put you right here, I cover the whole city and that is never ever a bad thing. So I'm just going to put you right there. And now I just need to set up a line to deliver um, our, our stuff from... Uh, from well, the food stuff to the rest of the city. I'm going to put you right next to the farm because it's cute. And then we can set it up. The other thing, don't get discouraged by this one just saying, I need 35 units because once you start delivering stuff, this city is going to grow. You see this target population right now, plus 20%. This is going to grow a lot and everything is going to grow uh, depending what you deliver. If you just deliver food, you should have residential buildings grow and the food demand grow. So 
just by you setting up lines that function, you should see an increase in um, productivity of your industries. So this is what we're gonna set up from there to here. Obviously wait until fall, uh, forever. Yes, like so, that looks good. Name it, this is truck again and uh, Dunstable delivery. That's all this is, perfect. And we just move stuff around from here. I'm just gonna put one truck on this for right now. I'm just gonna use this one. Doesn't matter what truck it is. I just need to make sure that it's on the line because once it's on the line here, the <clears throat> food processing plant actually understands that there will be a consumer eventually, but stuff has to be moved around. I'm actually surprised that the ship already has arrived here. That is pretty darn awesome. How are we doing over here? Oh, a ship just left and we have some stuff piling up on the um, on the port. So manage line, no, manage vehicle, get another ship going right there. And that ship hopefully goes to Dunstable Port. Perfect. So as you can see, we're moving things along. And if we look at the line, earlier the frequency was 19 minutes with one ship and now we're at the rate of 200 already, but our frequency is six minutes. What does that mean? Well, you can play with this and as you can see, my uh, trucks cannot really catch up with what's going on here. And I'm hoping that we haven't lost a lot of uh, material yet. If we lose material, I can look at that in just a little bit. Um, we can, <clears throat> excuse me, we can, we can work with that by just expanding the capacity of this, this, um, the station by adding some cargo buildings next to it. This one has a 75 cargo, um, added or capacity added to the station, which would be nice. What I wanna see is when this ship arrives, how much extra cargo do we still have here? As long as this number is white, you're doing fine because nothing falls off. Once this number turns blue, you are starting to lose some, um, some, some cargo and that is what you wanna avoid because you do get paid for it in this case, but you wanna actually produce something out of it. So. You're about to drop off 100 units. We have 109 sitting here. Very good. And there we are. You have that little exclamation point next to it. Some cargo items are lost because stations overloaded. What is the capacity of this station? Honestly, does it tell me that somewhere? Uh, 140. So how much do I have to add at this point to make this work? Some, but I also have to add trucks because we're clearly, clearly not catching up with this. So let's configure this to... Um, actually accommodate for most of the stuff that we just saw. And I'm going a little bit down here and here, that should be fine. Does this one, this one adds some cargo, but I don't know what it is. So now at the, at the least, we have uh, 290 capacity. That's good, nothing is falling off anymore. And that is helpful. Now we're waiting for the next ship to come on, uh, to, to come in here. And that looks like it's a little further away, but at this point, I'm pretty certain that this rate of 80 is never going to catch up with our rate of 200. So at least, at least I have to add a couple more vehicles. If you don't want to copy everything or not do the same thing over and over again, this one should help. Now I'm at 112 at 39 seconds. And I'm hoping that there's a middle ground between this station at 195, six minutes and the frequency for a couple seconds. So you can map that out. There's definitely an answer there, but that is not quite what I'm into. Min-maxing stuff, that is. Uh, and it looks like currently, because we have that close to 200 rate, our ships are actually coming in at an appropriate time where we don't have to add any new ships. At this point, you could, could remove this uh, shipyard if you really wanted to. That's pretty neat, huh? Okay, how's it going over here? We have some food actually coming in and that's wonderful. How much food do you wanna move? 35, why 35? Because the consumer, Dunstable in this case, only requires 35 units. So that's all that we're trying to ship right now. That does not mean that there's only gonna be 18 units sitting at the harbor. That just means that's all we wanna ship. Now we have more stuff delivered. We are 249, uh, which to me tells me we're still a little bit high on what's left over. So let's add another couple vehicles. And eventually this will this will all work itself out. As long as we don't lose material, we should be in a pretty good space. As you can see, the ships are already moving uh, pretty well with, with what we want them to do. 
Cool. So that line is set up, and this is another thing that I like to turn off. Turn off my vehicle overviews because it's it's just cluttering up, cluttering my UI. So this technically is working at this point, which is wonderful. Uh, we just got to keep an eye on this one that it doesn't get too overcrowded because the next one's already coming in, and we have the first twenty-one food being delivered. Great. Um, now we just have to wait until this guy can actually start delivering something to Dunstable. Then obviously there is Cockermouth, which we also want to add the 63 units of food, which will help us upgrade the, um, the food factory to the next level. And then we can actually start shipping, literally with ships, more food to other places. Middleton also wants some food. That's great. 27 units. Not a lot, but it's a lot closer than what Cockermouth is. Uh, a cockermouth. <laughs> I like that name. Uh, what they're doing. But we're going to do it in the next episode because I am trying to at least start at the beginning a little slower and give you as much information as I can so that you can play your own game the way you want to play it and uh, have fun with it. And hopefully everything makes enough sense. I will be back um, really at the end of this episode. Uh, well, I'm not going to skip anything is all I'm trying to say. You will see everything that happens, and we're going to do this all together, so uh, at least for the first 10 episodes, uh, and then we will see how we're doing. Right now, we are actually making some money as we look at our line statistics. Both my uh, but the lines that I have run so far are actually making money, and then the truck that only has one started the first delivery. That is wonderful. We can probably add a couple trucks to that because I'm assuming... There is something, oh no, there's nothing loaded there, but not that ship. This ship, yeah, that ship is going to bring some food by. That's wonderful. So let's do this again. If we look at our line, we can click on this guy, manage vehicle, and then duplicate it at least three times, I think. I don't know, The but they move six. 30, yeah, 33, our current rate that we want to deliver is 35. So 33 is pretty close as long as we deliver um, the stuff that we need. I'm expecting that the next ship. Oh, you just have you know, just have the same amount loaded. That's neat. But at least right now the ships are not running empty one way, so they're full, more full than fifty percent, which is very important. And we can just add to that by adding more food destinations for this guy, so we can actually start uh, shipping more. Right now production is fine, but we want to ship a lot more. Um. Here's what I'm going to do, I think. Yeah, we're, we're, we're back up to that. So we're at 158. I think I'm going to just up this. And this is the last thing we're going to do. I'm going to up this to 200 because that's really what I want to move in this um, area. And then 211 is a little high, but that's fine. Um, now, whatever the boats are delivering here should at least make it to the processing plant with no issues at all. And uh, then we should be good to go. Yay, transport 100%. If this is not 100%, means you lost some stuff um, on cargo stations along the way. That's not good. That's never good. So this looks like it's working for right now, and we're going to expand this next time. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you come back uh, for the next episode. I'm going to try to keep these back to back to back a little bit, like three, and three, three a week if I'm lucky, if you're lucky, if we're all lucky. And uh, so you can follow along and have some fun uh, while doing it and don't have to wait too long. Thank you so much for watching. I uh, hope you liked this. If you, like, if you did, like, subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you again next time and maybe then convince you then to do the same. Um, thank you. Bye-bye.